Hello, and welcome to another episode of Aphantasia Experiments, as well as the Psychic School podcast. I am so excited to have you here. I not I'm not sure if I'm going to talk too much about Aphantasia today, but I have this like feeling that I'm supposed to just keep podcasting on both platforms because they reach different people and honestly you never know what you're supposed to hear and I found so many messages through random podcasts so I'm like maybe I'm just supposed to put this out there and just keep doing it so I'm going to do that um today I wanted to talk about and by the way I'm walking my dog in the rain currently <laughs> this is like <sighs> It's so funny. I feel so compelled to podcast that like I'm like finding these ridiculous ways I, like driving in my car and and uh, walking my dog. So, you know, if you're thinking about, hey, I have something to say and I don't know when to say it, go for a walk, record a voice memo. Maybe it'll become a podcast. Who knows? Um, I mentioned that because I was watching. So last night I was up at two o'clock in the morning. And I know from going on TikTok this morning that Mercury is in retrograde, I think, starting today. Um, and so shit's going crazy, but in a more positive way um, than ones in the past. I thought a lot of crazy stuff happened to me during Mercury, Mercury retrograde, like changing jobs, um, death of loved ones, uh, just... I don't know, it's just a, always kind of a weird time. And I never really got too much into astro astrology. And then that stuff happened and I just, there's some, there's definitely more to the, to the sky than we know. I'll just leave it there. And I will talk about that more in another podcast episode because I'm just not, I'm not in it enough to, to speak on it yet. But um, today I want to talk a bit about religion and spirituality and like the difference and the similarities and um, I guess the importance in recognizing both of them and respecting all belief systems. Um, so a little backstory on me. I grew up in a house that was not, I think we were bat baptized Protestant. So we were baptized, but we never went to church. Um, anytime I went to church, I felt, pretty uncomfortable like I mean besides the chairs I just like not knowing what to do I'd always try to do like the hand stuff with my chest and I never knew what I was doing and I always just felt like like literally until recently my husband said why do you even try why it's not your religion like you don't have to like nobody's watching you like he's watching um but I don't know I uh I've always felt just out of place, I guess, in church. Um, but I always respected it. Um, but my sister is very, very, very anti-religion, like very, she's an atheist. Um, and like more like on the sciencey side of things, like she loves uh, Star Trek and like sci-fi and that kind of thing, but religion, no bueno and she gets like angry about it and she'll say things that are kind of offensive in front of people that are religion like religion religious um she's on her own journey and and that's wonderful Ooh. sorry oh my god this is like the rid most ridiculous podcast okay because i gotta try to put my phone in my pocket <laughs> there's an airplane above me it's raining outside I'm in a big field, just describing what I see, because I have to pick up my dog shit right now. That is why I'm <laughs> stopping, and I can't talk about, I can't talk about anything else while I'm focused on something else, so you're going to have to deal with this shit, okay? Um, and in case it's anyone's sign, an airplane, there it is, coming through. The airplane's up there. Okay, so back to like my family. I grew up uh, kind of like a black sheep in my family and not in like a negative way. My family was very kind to me. I mean, for the most part, like all brothers and sisters fight and, and whatnot, but our household was fairly peaceful 
and not traumatic in any sense that I can remember. Um, and yeah, like everything was fine in my house other than I just felt out of place. Um, I always felt just a little out of place and it. It was mo mostly, I think, because my brother and sister were so bonded together and I felt just a disconnect. And I know more about that now, like as an adult. Um, but as a kid, it was very like lonely. And so I like sought relationships in other places. So I had like really good friendships growing up. Um, but I also like felt connected to the other side. I never saw dead people. It wasn't like that. But I had this like sense and I questioned things at a really young age. And, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought because my dog's pulling me to the silver maple rock. In case you're like, hey, I asked for a, a maple or, or, or the color silver as my sign. Well, there it is. The dog just took me to it. Um, so my sister and brother were very connected and I felt kind of like out on the outside. And I think that's just like how my story was supposed to go. So I'm OK with that. Um, but I remember as a kid. So here's an example. OK, it's like really raining now and I'm in the forest. So I'm going to just stay in the forest. So you're going to hear probably little droplets because I'm being protected by the trees. Because uh, I don't want to go out of the forest and get all wet. So. Gosh, I hope it doesn't thunder. But if it does, you will get my last podcast recording if I get stuck under a tree. Oh, I shouldn't say those things. Okay. Um, <coughs> and now she's pulling me in another direction. So one of the mem one of the not earliest, but one of my earliest memories, like spiritually, that I remember, and it all came back because my daughter went fishing this weekend and lost a fish, and she had a funeral for a fish. Like she, she played with the fish for a while. After a while, I'm like, dude, you gotta stop playing with this dead fish. It's kind of getting creeper at this point. But she just like loved it. She thought it was like, you know, I don't know, but it was kind of getting creepy. She's five, so I was like, you need to respect the fish and like, well let its body go his soul is gone already and so she decided she wanted to have like a celebration for this fish so we did a whole funeral for the fish and uh i know in her head she's questioning things right now like she's questioning where did that fish's soul go you know and that's what happened to me very young started questioning things and uh i had this like ooh, whoa oh my god there's this like giant snake dead oh it's oh you know what it is it's a oh my gosh it's a snake snake skin that's been like removed oh that's wild okay sorry um uh, this podcast is gonna be so ridiculous oh my god i was like it's a good idea to go for a walk and do a podcast sure <laughs> so your sign this week is snake boom you got it um um, and if you don't know about signs, go read Signs by Laura Lynn Jackson. It's such a good book. I read it so many times and I feel like it's just like it's such an uplifting, uplifting book. Um, and again, it's like stories. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. Like, maybe I'll get into it. But stories are just like a way we learn, um, like religion. OK, so as a kid, going back, I remember my internet block. Going back. I remember, so we were, we had pets growing up. We never had a dog. I always wanted a dog. Never had a dog. We had goldfish. We had hamsters. We had birds. I think only one bird, Lucky. And we had a rabbit, Thunder. And I remember each time the animals would die, because they don't have a long shelf life, you know, um, I would question things and I would think about where they went and whatever. And I remember, I think it was when my bird died. I don't remember the animal that much, but I do remember the feeling. And listening to my brother and sister downstairs. You know what? It was, it was, uh, it was thunder, the rabbit. I do remember. Um, listening 
to my brother and sister downstairs listening to Dave Clark 5, sat all over or glad all over or something. They were dancing around. I could hear them stomping um, and clapping. I was like hurt that they didn't like think about thunder and weren't feeling that loss the way I was and wondering and questioning things the same way I was. They were just like over it and whatever. And I think that maybe because I questioned so many things when I was little, I don't know. It's made me really like able to connect or maybe I've always been connected. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but, um, watching my, my daughter have this experience with this fish, um, and the things she said to me, like in private about death and stuff, uh, it just, I don't know, it made me like remember a lot of things from my childhood and, and my feelings surrounding a lot of things and how I felt disconnected from my other family members and the way I felt. Um, and honestly, this, this feeling of being disconnected from myself and from my family, like being able to, to not speak authentically who I am in front of my family, like, especially my sister, um, I can't be my authentic self with her, so I can't speak my truth at all. Um, it's made it really difficult to speak my truth with other people. So my husband or, um, I've literally done a loop in this circle, in this forest like three times. Um, like my husband, I'm just recently opened up more to him about my spiritual side. Like he knows I have books stacked everywhere about like near death experiences and, um, signs and ghosts and telepathic communication and like, energetic healing and all this stuff like I I'm always reading about stuff but I don't really talk about it because I think it's something he's not interested in he's like he's a football guy like we're so different but uh we come together so nicely um but I just recently started like I honestly it felt like I was pushed to do this it doesn't feel like I had a choice but I think that this is just like so obviously the direction my my life is headed in the spiritual side of things that I had to share it with my significant other. Like I can't keep it in anymore. And I was, it felt like I was pushed spiritually, like really pushed hard to do, to talk more openly and freely with my husband. And it's been well received, really well received. I, I, he doesn't always have the reaction that I want. Like, Ooh, tell me more. That's exciting. La la la. You know, he's not my girlfriend, but he listens. And he doesn't mock me or judge me. He just listens and doesn't always agree what I have to say. But that's not what life is about. I just want to, like, share the things I'm excited about. Or if I have, like, uh, if I have some dream about a dead person or a dream that I think someone's going to die, I need to share. Please let me share it with my husband who's sitting right next to me, you know. So that's really been great for me. Um, but it's taken a lot of work. Like, I'm in therapy and I think I mentioned in a previous episode that I feel like talking for me to my friends, like we do voice notes to each other, has literally changed my life. It's made me more just, it's made me be able to like process the things that are swirling in my mind. Being able to speak it out loud, like helps it, like helps my thoughts become more concrete and it makes me know which thoughts are the true thoughts and which thoughts are just like meant to like float away. I hope that makes sense, but uh, it does completely to me. Um, so I've been working on talking more authentically and stuff. And uh, I, I literally feel like I've been pushed to start this podcast. Like I had two separate dreams about them, um, the importance of them and like, where the direction it's going to go and how it's going to get there and like all these things. Um, and I feel so last night I was up in the middle of the night and I was watching, I don't know what, what's going on, but I was like Mer Mercury retrograde shit. I was watching Tyler Henry and he was speaking. I watched an episode of Tyler Henry on Larry King live and man, Larry King live is kind of a, Larry King is kind of a dingus to me and I don't like judging other people but you know when someone when you when someone asks you a question 
But then while you're answering, they like ask you another question. You can just know that they're not actually listening to your well thought out response. They're just like attacking you to like prove you wrong. You know, everyone knows a person like this. I know several um, and I've been spiritually attacked like this so many times. Like ask me a question. I'll tell me my answer. But you're not really listening. You're just thinking of your defense. You know, you're not absorbing. You're just ready to ready to attack and then on the other side of it is i'm listening to your side and not thinking of an attack so when you wait for my attack response i don't have it because i am processing and absorbing what you've said you know uh anyways larry king was kind of a dingus with with tyler henry but in this interview this is such a tangent in this interview um of course he really wants to go this way but it's like pouring in this interview, Tyler Henry was talking about how, uh, like, someone asked on Twitter or whatever if he ever gets, like, tired of doing it or if it's draining or whatever. And he said that he loves it because he's, like, serving his community and, like, serving people with love and whatever. But also when he doesn't do a reading for a while. Stop rain, please. Just for a bit, go to Cuba. Um, we're gonna go back in the forest. It's still too rainy, but it'll stop. Watch. Um, so in this interview, he's saying that he he um, loves what he does, but he also feels like if he doesn't do a reading for a while it like builds up. Yeah, I think you use the term like it feels like it stacks up. And that's how I feel now about podcasting. Like I have so many things are coming in literally daily, like life lessons, important things that I feel like I need to talk about. And even when I'm talking, I get like so many new things that come in that are like, don't forget to say this, don't forget to say this. It's uh it's wild. It feels like this stacking thing and I and it feels very positive like such a good feeling getting it out and releasing it and the feedback I'm getting it feels really good um but it's just funny like I watched that and I was like I get it that whole interview you should watch it by the way Larry King Live Tyler Henry just YouTube it it's not very long and uh it'd be like Tyler Larry King is like all the scientists who are who mock spirituality and Tyler Henry is the, the one who's level-headed and just trying to explain how he interprets things currently because he knows that he doesn't know everything. You know, I think it's important that we, like, admit that we don't know everything. It's impossible to. How can you look into the sky and think that you know everything? It's impossible. You can have belief systems and, like, an understanding, but the whole purpose of life is to, like, learn and grow and not know everything, but experience life and live and learn through it, you know? Big tangent to say I wasn't raised in a religious household and um, I've struggled being authentic because of my, my mostly, and I don't like, I think that my sister challenges me for a reason. I think that she's there for like, there's a purpose behind it. So I'm not like mad about it. She's there to challenge me for a reason because I'm going to be challenged by lots of people in the future. And it starts, you know, with someone you're comfortable with, I think. Um, so I grew up not religion, religious, but knowing there was something more, like just every time I thought about death, I would think about things just ending and, and the soul being gone. Not even like, I didn't know what a soul was at the time, right? Like I just, I would think about like, where, where would you go? And I would think about us just like going to blackness. And I just knew that not to be true. You know, the more I thought about it, the more it seemed absurd to me that, you know, flowers grow every year. They die and they grow and they, and grass and trees and the roots and the trees and everything just seems so like, I don't know, magical and works together and, and then there's these people that just like live and die and then that's it. There's no regrowth. There's no 
There's nothing. It's just gone. Kaput. Doesn't make sense to me. So, and it never has. Um, and I, I just feel like when I was a kid, like my brother and sister, I don't know if they questioned those things in the same way that I did, or maybe they questioned them and their, their, their result was like that that's all that they could grasp is that nothingness is what we are, you know? I don't know. So there's two different sides of it, right? But my sister was, uh, I don't know, she gets really offended when people talk about religion or whatever. And I think that her knowing that I'm more spiritual and like now that I'm speaking more openly about, about myself, about who I truly am, um, she almost, it's like, it's almost like she's sad for me, like angry and, and upset for me that I've like been tricked or whatever. And it's not even about that. I think that even if I am tricked and I don't, and none of this is true. My whole life principle is built on like kindness to other people and like trying to understand people and loving people regardless of their flaws. And like, like that's like the main thing, like living and learning through life and being kind to others. And, and if spirituality is wrong about that, well, heck, I made someone smile in my life and isn't that worth it even now that I'm just dust, you know? So I don't think that in any way this is serving in a negative way so um there's that so religion i think this is my like this is my sorry i'm trying to adjust my mic because i'm worried that it wasn't recording oh, that would suck if it's all gobbledygook um religion to me is like um these life lessons and life principles that we're supposed to learn through our lifetime. Um, but they're told as stories because we, uh, we learn through listening to stories. You know, some people, wow, I just picked up my phone. I'm at 22 minutes, 22 seconds. Sorry. You know, when you just like, don't look at something for a while and you pick it up and it's a number. Your number's two, two, two. There it is for you. Um, religions tell a story, like the Bible, for example. It's telling these stories, and it's supposed to teach us lessons. Um, but no religion is the right religion. But if you've ever like really looked at religions, and I don't go deep into all the different religions because I think, just like a game of telephone, the the stories change over time and I don't know, you don't always get the same principles and lessons you're supposed to after it's been like changed and whatnot. I, I'm like, my belief is that we're all kind of, we're all a one consciousness. So there's different people, different types of people in this world. There's different religions to help them learn these lessons. Uh, because people need storytelling to to learn. Um, and if we just like lived aimlessly without any religion or purpose, uh, we might not see and learn as much as we do with these like guiding principles. Um, so I don't think religion is a bad thing. I think it's meant for good. It's meant uh it's, it's to serve a purpose and to help us learn and grow. And I, and I don't know if any of it's true, but I don't say it's not. It could be true. Um, I think about like Joseph. Um, again, I don't know much about religion, but like Joseph would see these things in his dreams and he would have these prophecies. Like why, why do we disregard that as not like sign, a sign of, of, like people in our day to day life might experience that. You know how many dreams I've had that are prophecies? Am I Joseph? Um, like why do we ignore that? Why do we, people who are religious, like think psychics are crazy when there's like, or like evil or whatever, when there's like signs of it in the Bible? But I don't, I don't, I don't get that. And I think that when you use religious religion to like judge other people for their behavior not being to your standard, standard or your, like religious whatever, 
um, I think that's where religion went wrong. Religion has gone wrong. Um, so for me, I'm not religious. Religious. Um, I have had like experiences where Mother Mary has come up for me, like in various weird ways, and uh, I don't really know what that's about. And I, uh, I've listened to the Holy Rosary because of that experience. Like I've had, it, like if just Mother Mary came up in so many different ways in like a week span. But I started listening to the Holy Ro- Rosary, and that was like one of the things that made me realize that repetition helps uh, with hypnotic like trance and accessing source. Um, and it doesn't really matter what you say; you can say anything. But the Holy Rosary d- did it for me a few times. Um, so for me, when people ask, oh, are you religious? Do you believe in God? Well, I believe in something. And I think it's more of like a source, like an energy source, like a a source of plasma, something that is like providing us life, you know, like maybe the Big Bang Theory, the Big Bang was this source plugging in his video game you know and we're in this video game but there's a bazillion different video games that we don't know about because we're in this video game and we can't access other video games because they're in a case and uh this is just like a a metaphor obviously but when i was at the cottage i my daughter moved this rock and there was a bunch of like bugs underneath it there was like a bunch of little ants that were like carrying these little it looked like marva almost i don't know maybe they were eggs I, I don't know what it was like little rice pellets i don't know but i was like oh let's leave the the ants be let's put the rock back they were doing they had a mission and so we put it back but in my head i was thinking oh man they're living a whole life under that rock you know they're living a whole experience underground they have no idea about egypt you know <laughs> They're, they're living in their own world and they have no idea the concept of something more out there. And I think that that goes with Earth. We feel like we're, this, I mean, we know that the universe is massive, but we don't understand how much we don't know because it's impossible. You know, imagine explaining to an ant. Oh, man. I, I feel like Tyler Henry talked about this on the Larry King thing. Watch it. Like, I feel like this is coming through because of what I watched last night. But it was just like, yes! You know, when you watch something and you're like, that's exactly what I feel like. That's what it was. Um, now I'm walking on the street again. It's still raining. I hope you don't. I'm sure you heard it more in the forest, actually. Um, so I would love to hear, like, what you think about spirituality versus religion. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say <laughs> was that, so I've studied a lot of like near-death experiences. Um, I love learning about near-death experiences. I feel like it's such confirmation that there's, there's more to our, like the consciousness that we know. Um, so in a lot of near-death experiences, people have like religious epiphanies you know like they have their like life review they meet god or whatever and and god will be if they're like atheist for example but you know they're they grew up with a friend who was catholic so they know a lot about catholicism they might see god or jesus or whatever but it's like their mind's way or their consciousness's way of like processing, you know, like it's, it's like you see what you have learned most about. And if you're an atheist and you, you don't have anything, like, I think that's the universe's way of kind of like, when you get out of it, you need to like have faith in something. Um, and I don't think it's about, uh god or or i don't know i think that we're all just kind of one and the religions there's different religions for different people 
for a reason because we are all put on this earth with even though we're all one we are all different characters with different minds and different abilities and uh we're supposed to not be all all the same and that's what makes the world interesting and that's what makes us be able to learn and grow right if you have the same personality as your partner or your boss or your sister or your mother and all you did was talk about the same interests all the time and you know did the same thing all the time and were never challenged or or exposed to different things how are you learning and growing in life you know so I think that we are faced with these different religions and different viewpoints for a reason. And uh, it's not about, it shouldn't be about like proving people wrong. I feel like there's right, there's a lot of right in a lot of the things. Um, but the main thing is like not judging other people for me, like based on, I think it's really important that we, we like, if we're religious or if you have a certain viewpoint, let's take a step back and don't judge someone else for having a different viewpoint as you do. Um, I literally, I randomly opened up a page to my, my book by Brian Weiss the other day and it was talking about empathy and how you gain empathy in life from experiencing loss and like, hardship and whatever like you learn empathy through experience and I think as a kid I learned empathy quickly because of all these like deep thoughts I had about these creatures that died and like I don't know I just always felt you know I always felt like I could feel there's other people's feelings I remember a story about this kid on my street who lost half a toe from a a license cutting his foot and and I couldn't see that visual but I I felt it I don't think I could see it and this is one of the things that I'm like maybe this is what caused my aphantasia because I could see it I don't know but I remember I remember I can't get rid of it there's no ability to turn this off the feeling of of like ugh, just like ickiness you know um I, I honestly don't know where I was going with that. And my walk is like over now because I am sopping wet. I walked way longer than I should have because I wanted to get all that out. Um, but if you have any, like, if you want to talk more about this, I'm a pretty open book. Um, I know I don't know everything. I am learning and literally every day I grow and, and, and change and uh, expand. So um, I'm not saying that I know everything. I just think that we are all way more connected than we could ever possibly imagine. And uh, no, and uh, I'm just loving learning more about all this stuff. I just love it so much. So if you're interested in this stuff too, feel free to reach out to me. I think the best email address to use, I get them too, but is rofocreative at gmail.com. That's R-O-F-O creative at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you continue to listen. Have a great day.